Joining us now is uh, Alan Dershowitz, of course, a Harvard Law professor and uh, attorney. Hello, sir. How are you? How are you? Very good. Good, good. I'm glad you're, you're feeling good. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, the, the defense could rest tomorrow, we're being told. Today we had um, the uh, forensics ex expert for the defense, the man who wrote the book, uh, Mr. DeMeo. And um, it, it just seems like every day, uh, certainly since the defense has put on its case, but even, uh, in my opinion, on cross-examination of the prosecution's witnesses, it seems like every day in this trial has gone well for the defense. Well, the big problem was the original decision by the prosecutor to overcharge. Uh, sh she is a corrupt, politically motivated uh, person, the prosecutor, who decided to overcharge for political reasons uh, and to hide the evidence that uh, showed that it was not a second-degree murder uh, from the court. When that originally happened, she engaged, in my view, in unethical and unprofessional conduct, uh, you may know that when I originally made that charge, she filed a complaint with Harvard Law School uh, against me, and I said I was going to repeat those charges uh, because they're true. And it's her decision from day one that has messed up this case because this is not a second-degree murder case. It never should have been charged as a second-degree murder case. And now I suspect what the prosecution is going to do is they're going to try to get a compromise verdict by asking the court to charge manslaughter. And uh, since the case has already been tried on second-degree murder, it will confuse things even more to have the case go to the jury on a manslaughter charge. All right, so now I'm, even, uh, now I'm confused even more, only because uh, on Friday uh, I heard the uh, defense uh, make a motion to uh, throw out the second-degree uh, charge, right. uh, and, uh, and the judge refused. So, why would the, so, so uh, explain that to me. Is that a kind of an automatic uh, refusal? Would it have been a— It's a, almost yeah. automatic. Okay. Uh, it's very rare for a judge to throw a case out, certainly at the end of the prosecution's case. They always want to wait to hear the whole case. Um, I suspect she won't throw out the second-degree murder. She'll charge both second-degree murder and manslaughter in the hope that the jury will come to a compromise verdict saying, look, it's really not second-degree murder, but the idea of a guy going free when there's a dead 17-year-old who was unarmed doesn't strike us in the right direction, so although the law doesn't really justify a manslaughter prosecution here, we're going to come out with a, with a compromise verdict. That happens very often in these kinds of cases. That's why in many jurisdictions, compromise verdicts aren't permitted. And without the defense agreeing, you can't charge manslaughter if you've tried a case on a theory of second-degree murder. Florida, it's apparently permitted. And so that's very likely what will happen. And there is some possibility that the jury will come back with a, a manslaughter verdict. Now, of course, in the Casey Anthony case, they tried that gambit, and it failed. And the jury came back essentially with nothing because of the overcharging. You'd think Florida prosecutors would learn their lesson. They never do. I had a case in Florida some years ago where my guy helped his dying wife who had terminal cancer and had weeks to live in horrible pain. He helped her take some pills that ended her life, and they charged my client with first-degree capital murder, the death penalty. And, of course, the jury took about 11 seconds to acquit. And that's what happens. Prosecutors flex their muscles. They get these big indictments in the beginning. They make their headlines. And what happened to this woman, this prosecutor? You haven't even seen her. She's disappeared. She did the original charge, and now she's just disappeared and put the burden on other prosecutors in the courtroom to carry her water. And so, you know, she is responsible for this. And if there are going to be any consequences in terms of uh, rioting or anything like that, we all hope there won't be, it will squarely be her fault. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, and, and do you, what, what do you think should happen to her as a result? She should be removed from office. Um, she should be charged with unprofessional conduct. She should be disciplined by the bar and disciplined by the court <clears throat> for withholding exculpatory evidence, for overcharging, for raising expectations, and for acting in an utterly unprofessional manner. Okay, uh, we're talking Alan Dershowitz here on the uh, Steve Malzberg show. Um, the the defense uh, is probably go well. Let me let me ask you this: when, the, when closing arguments come, uh, could the defense say? Um, and by the way, did you say that the prosecution will ask the judge? Will that be in fr right. in front of the jury or away no. from the jury? Okay, you away can't from the do jury. In front of the jury, it'll be outside okay. the hearing of the jury. They'll ask for a charge both on second degree murder and on manslaughter, so that the jury can come with a compromise. Oh, verdict. but I thought you said the prosecution might ask for her to drop second degree. No, no, no. no. no, no. Oh, I'm They'll sorry. Just okay. ask to charge. Maybe gotcha. I was unclear. They'll just ask to charge both homicides 
and uh, that is secondary murder and manslaughter, in the expectation that the jury might very well not right. agree with their theory on second-degree murder and come back with a verdict on manslaughter. Now, manslaughter also carries a very, very significant yeah. potential penalty. Yeah, very long so jail So that term. would be a big victory for them. Absolutely. But So that's what, that would lead to my next question, uh, Alan, and that is, can uh, Mark O'Mara say, look, you know, uh, I, I think we've shown you without a doubt that uh, that there's no second degree, no ill intent, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't come back. Don't don't think that you had. In other words, is he allowed to say, I, I hope you don't settle on a compromise. Don't think that, uh, you know, you got to punish him somehow because the facts don't show it. Could he do that or no? There are two ways he can do that. And the answer is yes. One, he could make a motion. Uh, asking the court not to grant the government's request for a compromise verdict manslaughter charge. He can do that, uh, saying that in a case like this where they overcharged, it, they shouldn't be rewarded by being given a compromise charge. He can do that in front of the judge, not in front of the jury. And then he can argue to the jury, look, we've tried this case on a second-degree murder a theory. Uh, there's been no proof of second-degree murder. You ought to acquit. You ought not to let the prosecution uh, persuade you to come back with a compromise verdict because we haven't had a real opportunity to defend against that charge. He could make that argument to the jury if the judge lets him. If you were sitting on the jury uh, right now uh, and the case went to you today, would you uh, let him walk? I would say there's reasonable doubt. I would say nobody knows who started the initial fight. Remember, it's monumentally irrelevant who's morally guilty here, whether or not Zimmerman was a racist and racially profiled and shouldn't have been doing it and didn't listen to the police. That's all irrelevant under Florida law. The case begins when the first blow is struck, essentially. And we don't know who struck the first blow. Well, we don't know if uh, Trayvon Martin came out from behind a uh, dark area and jumped him and got him down. And as long as we don't know that, we don't know whose voice it was who was yelling, uh, you know, help me, help me, that's reasonable doubt. Um, you know, most Americans deep down don't believe in reasonable doubt. What they say is we've got to figure out who did it. Right. Uh, we're scientists. Uh, this is CSI. Uh, at the end of CSI, you know who did it, who right. didn't do it. That's not what a criminal trial is about. If you think it's 60% likely or 70% or even 80% likely that uh, Zimmerman is guilty and doesn't deserve self-defense, you have to acquit. Uh, it has to be much higher than that. It has to be certainly like 90% likely before you can say there is no reasonable doubt. So I think if I were on the jury... Uh, I think I would find reasonable doubt. And one I more. I might not know yeah. what happened. I might not, I might not, you know, want to be friendly with George Zimmerman at the end of the case or give him any kind of a accolade. I certainly would not declare him innocent. There's a big difference between declaring him innocent and declaring him not guilty. You know, the Scottish verdict is not proven, which would be a much more accurate verdict because in this case, it seems to me second-degree murder has not been proven. Are you afraid uh, that uh, there will be um, the, the same reaction we saw to the Rodney King uh, uh, verdict yeah. in California? Because, the, the, you know, they're planning down there for what, what the police chief and the mayor are calling, you know, Rodney King-like riots. And t two of the three city officials that I saw interviewed are black. Yeah, I hope not because several reasons. Number one, the lawyer who yesterday was on television uh, for the uh, Martin family was very responsible. He said, look, what we wanted was a trial. What we wanted was justice. We've gotten our trial. Whatever the result is, that's going to be acceptable to us. I think the Martin family are very decent people. They seem to have uh, uh, in ev every way uh, in indicated that they would not want that kind of a response. So unless some irresponsible people come from out of town to try to stir something up, I don't think we're seeing a Rodney King type. Uh, response. And by the way, this is not a Rodney King case. Rodney King, you know, you saw it on video. It was no justification for doing what they did to that poor man. Whereas uh, in this case, it's very confusing. It's very conflicted. And, you know, you don't want precedents that will could be used in the next case against a young black man who's trying to defend himself against aggression by, by somebody else. Self-defense is a very important principle in American law. And people forget, too, that the government has the burden of proving beyond a reasonable doubt that he didn't act in self-defense. That is, they have to prove a negative beyond a reasonable doubt, which is not easy to right. do. No, That's why self-defense is a good defense and why many lawyers use it in cases like this. All right, Alan, thank you very much. I'm glad you're feeling better, sir. Thank you. Take